Hey everyone, today I wanted to share with you this cool tutorial on how you can customize your own rings or necklaces, bows, whatever you uh, want to do with it. So, hope you enjoy. The supplies you will need are, of course, clay. And I use oven baked, oven -baked clay. Um, you could use, um, like air drying clay, but I find that it does not work that well. So I have a Sculpey 3 and Primo here, and you can get these at um, Joann's, Michael's, you know, any kind of craft stores, and a lot of times you can get them on sale, which is really awesome. You're also going to be needing ring, ring backs or pendants, depending on what you want to do. Um, there's also molds that you can use as well if you'd like something like that. Um, you can use hot glue to adhere the charm to your uh, ring back, but I prefer E6000. It's stronger and um, better. And if you want to make them into charms, then you will need some um, jump rings like you see over here. And I recommend if you are using jump rings to use pliers. If you do not have pliers, you can just use your hands. Um, you're also going to need some other um, utensils. You're going to need something to roll out the clay with. I just use like a Sharpie pen or whatever. You don't have to like go out and get all this crazy, you know, stuff to make these. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the red clay just because I like red. <laughs> um, also, you're going to need, if you want to decorate these with glitter or you know, beads, jewels, whatever, you will need, um, you know, stuff for that as well. Um, I will actually show you guys how or what you can do to uh, decorate these after you have baked them. Okay, so I'm going to take about a third of um, one of the bars and I'm going to take just a little, a little bit I'm not too precise with this, just, you know, a little piece of clay and set that to the side for the middle part of the bow. And when you get clay, I recommend kind of feeling the clay. Don't squish the packaging and ruin it for somebody else, but just kind of feel it and feel like, feel if it's soft or not. That's a good way to just tell if it's a clay you want to work with. Once you break off the piece, you will want to knead it just a little bit so it's softer to work with. And once you feel like it's a nice consistency, you will roll it into a ball, just like this. So now I'm going to roll it out like a little, you know, log kind of. Or a snake, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Try to be really even with it. Um, you don't want it to have like lumps or creases in it. And you want it about, about the size of your three fingers. Um, you could do it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, depending on what you are looking for. Um, now from here, you can do two things. You can either go ahead and flatten it out or you can uh, make the sides a little bit smaller. I do the sides a little bit smaller, not that much though. All right, so now you're going to take whatever you're going to use to roll it out. And I actually have something that's a little bit thicker than um, the Sharpie. Somebody. But you could use a Sharpie, you could use whatever. And you just want to flatten this guy out, just like so. And when you're flattening out, you really want to make sure that it's even, and you want to make sure that it's not too thin. You will want to bring the sides into the middle, and I like to just press that down slightly. You just want to shape it so that it's even. All right, so once you have that, you can take your finger or, you know, if you have a tool to, um, to kind of push it in, you can use that, um, you know, whatever works best for you. And I'm just going to take this little guy. And you can take a knife is what I usually, you can take a knife, that's what I usually use, but I'm just using this right now. So I'm just kind of pushing, kind of making a little line. Do you see that, how there's a little crease in there? Just gonna kind of do that and then I'm gonna push it in. And as I'm doing that, just pushing it in like this. And then when I get that nice, clean, pretty line there, I'm going to take the two the top parts and push them back. 
So we will have created this little fold here. See? It's starting to look like a bow a little bit. All right, so now we're going to take that piece that we put off to the side earlier. And we are going to knead it as well. You're going to roll it into a ball as well. And um, roll it out like a snake too. You're going to roll it out pretty, um, pretty thin. But make sure it's even. All right, and then once we have that, we're going to take our tool to uh, flatten it. I'm just going to flatten this little guy. Now you can buy tools to cut your clay or to flatten your clay out at the craft stores too. If you want to do that, go for it. But a lot of times you can just use something simple like this. Um, now I'm going in with just my fingers and kind of making sure this is all kind of straight and even. Otherwise you're going to have, um, it's going to look kind of weird on your piece. Right down the center. And we're just going to take this part and just smooth that out. And uh, we have our bow. Now I'm going to show you guys another thing that you can do with clay. So now I'm going to take this white clay. Now I recommend if you're using multiple colored clays to wash your hands in between because as you can see, the clay stains and as you can see right here are a little bit of pink because I was working with the red before. Um, I'm going to decorate this piece so it really doesn't bother me that they, you can see like the red in it or the pink or whatever. But um, normally I would, you know, wash my hands. Or you don't have to wash your hands, you can just use like wet ones or whatever. Anyways, you just need something that will clean your hands. Now I have a mold here. This is from Mod Podge. Now they sell these at the craft stores next to where you can buy Mod Podge or hot glue gun. I'm going to try this out. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're going to, um, we're going to test it. All right, and we'll do one more. I like this one a lot. This one's going to be pretty tricky, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to just pop these out if they do pop out easily. I have no clue. I'm hoping they do. Oh, that popped out pretty good. Oh, that looks great. That one's really thin. That'll be interesting. All right, so anyways, now that you have all the pieces that you're going to bake, if you're going to do this, I would recommend making however many pieces you're going to make. Um, before you bake it because it's just a waste of time if you're only going to do one piece. Um, I mean, if that's all you want to do, that's fine. But if you know that you're going to want to make more, go ahead and do them all at the same time so you can bake them all at once. And you will want to um, look at the instructions on your packaging for how to bake these. So before I bake, I just want to share with you guys, if you want to um, make one of them into like a necklace pendant, Go ahead and grab or grab like a toothpick or whatever. This is a little short skewer stick. And we're just going to poke two holes, or you could do one, but for this one I'm going to do two. I'm just going to do one right here. I'm just going to poke a little hole in there, and then I'm going to do one right over here as well. We'll do one more just because I don't know if this one's going to turn out. It's like really thin. <laughs> so we'll do one more for fun. We'll do this one. Okay, so we have to put the hole in before so when it bakes, there will be a hole in it so we can put the jump ring in it um, later. So I'm getting ready to bake these, and once they're done, I will show you guys what they look like. Okay, so our clay is done baking, and so we're going to move on. This piece broke because it was way too thin, so we're just going to set that to the side. If something like this happens, you can totally use this as something else. Like, you can just break these apart and put them on... Um, you know, like a binder as decorations or whatever. If they're thicker, obviously, like these pieces, they're not going to break as easy as this. But anyways, so 
this is the piece that we had put the um, little hole through for the jump ring. And I'm going to go ahead and put the jump ring in now so that when I paint it, I don't have to worry about that, clo that um, hole closing. So you're going to take your jump ring and I always recommend that when you do your jump ring that you pull it apart this way. Do not pull it out. So you'll go like this. So it looks like this. You guys can see that. And we're just going to stick this through right here. Okay, to color these pieces you can use paint if you'd like, but I like to use a trusty nail polish. It works just as good. If you don't want to do anything to it, you can leave it how it is if you'd like, but I like to put a coat over it. You can buy glaze at the craft store where you get um, the clay, but I just use an old clear coat of nail polish. Now while I'm waiting for those to uh, dry so I can do, do another coat, I'm going to explain to you how I did some of these. These are from previous um, times that I've made this. Now this is obviously a plain one and it's just got um, a clear top coat over it. This one I put some clear nail polish with um, glitter in it on it and then painted a top coat over it. Now these two kind of have like a tie-dye look and I did that by taking some chalk pastels and just scraping some of the product off with a knife and taking just like a paintbrush and painting it um, over it and then sealing it with the um, the uh, clear nail polish. Just take out your ring base and you're going to take your E6 E6000 or whatever glue you have, but once again, I recommend E6000. This comes in a much larger um, container usually, um, but this is a sample one, so you can definitely get the sample one at your local craft store. And then you're just going to take the back and just place it right on your um, ring, ring back. And I just recommend holding that down sitting it upside down, pushing it on there, and letting it dry um, overnight. So here is the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I uh, would love to see what you guys um, make if you make any. So if you do make some, um, please post them on Instagram. You can hashtag um, it's me, Chris D, DIY. And uh, so I can see what they are. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll have the links in the description box and all that good stuff. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you subscribe to my channel and like this video and share it with your friends so that they can come join us for some DIY fun. And um, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.